Obolasa. Yere Abiye Hector Goma. Yere na mina ingi senibo. Doctor Mrs. Ibibia Shego Jo me omena ye di apwe. Dr. Shego Jo and I are your teachers. So we will get started. As usual, wa mo kwen we will speak our language. We will speak English also. So last week, Mina Dawoye was the alphabet. So we had a chance to look at Mina alphabet. A okumu zi wola. So what I'd like us to do is just to spend five minutes and have a quick dash through what we learned last week. So let me bring those slides up. And um, so it's going to be up to the, to the students to take us through what I have to show you. Remember, I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> if you're ready. <laughs> so let's see how much of this you have gone through. Okay, let's take this one. <laughs> Can you go through these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six letters? Who can hear you? I go. We still can't hear you. Does she need to unmute herself? Yeah, if not, you have to ask it. Yeah, sorry, I've just done that now. Um, yeah. A, B, B, K, D, D. Fantastic. So the first, <laughs> <laughs> the first six letters A, B, B, C, D, D. Okay. So those are the first six um, letters. Um, Mebaka, are you there? Yes, sir. Do you want to try a, a few more? Okay, so starting from... Starting from the next one. So the letter E. A, E, F, G, B, G, K, E, E. Okay. <laughs> J, Key, B, Queen, Lee. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> go on. Almost there. M, uh, M, N, N, Nui, Nyo, O, O, P, R, C. C. Um, oh, okay. U O. U O V V E and Z. Well done, well done. That's yeah. great. Well done. <laughs> so, yeah. So those are the um, alphabet, and we keep trying it. And I went through a few of the um, of the using the each of the letters to form simple words. So um, remember what's this? Remember, can you hear me? This I word, what's this word? Okay. It's Agba. It's Abba. Okay. Abba. Abba. Shoulder, yes. Abba. Shoulder, okay. Abba, okay. Abba, yes. Okay. Um, Rebecca, what's this? The first one, Agba. The first one, they're both rising. They, yes. So your tone will rise for both. Sorry, Agba. Again. Sorry. Agba. Agba, yes. Agba. Agba. Okay. Agba, because they're both rising. Sorry, Agba. 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 Okay. Agba. Okay. Yes, Agba. they're both rising. Can you say it again? Agba. Agba. All right, and the next one. Agba. 
Agba, Agba. they are both falling. So that's the key thing. Okay. When the stress mark, which is what today's lesson is all about, when the stress mark is rising, your tone rises. And if you look at what I shared in the group, I shared it in the group to show the change in the frequency of the sound, depending on whether it's a rising stress mark, a level stress mark, or a falling stress mark. So if it's rising, the frequency goes up. If it's falling, it goes down. So that's why I use that example. So by looking at the stress mark, you get to prepare your voice to raise it. So the first one here is, because it's going up, your voice goes up, you say, ah. And because the next one is also going up, you say the same, ah, again, so it's ah, ba. While the second one, they are both falling. So you say, ah, ba. So that's the key thing, ah, ba. Agba. My one is rising and the next one is falling. You say Agba. You don't have that, but it's Agba. Now, if the first one is falling, next one is rising, you say Agba. So it's, and that's how your tone is Agba, both rising, Agba, both falling. Agba, if it's rising and falling, Agba, if it is falling and rising. So you look at the word and you prepare the tone of your voice to either rise or fall. And these two words, Agba and Agba, tells you that if your tone is not right, what you're going to say may be different from what you want to say, even though the letters are correct. And that's why it's key, not just to know the spelling, but to know where the stress marks are, because what you say will be different depending on where the stress marks are. Okay, so we'll just go on and then there are a few more words here. Um, Antipat, you want to say those words for us? You need to unmute. <laughs> okay. okay, so it's all uh, rising, uh, the first one. Again? Again? Uh, Aka Agbala. Apala. Alagba. Agbala. Apala. Yes. Alaba. Yes. Anana. Yes. Agba. Akba. 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 Because like like you saw, I mean everything was right. Aka is all rising. Apala is all falling. Ah uh, is low. La is up, ba is level. Anana, all rising. So if you call it anana, I don't understand what you're saying because it's all rising. If you call it anana, I won't know what you're saying, but anana is all rising. And that's why the stress marks make people understand what you're saying. So aka, apala, all level, all falling. Ah, uh, lo, ah, uh, la, ba, level. Ah, uh, na, na, all rising. Ah, uh, ba, all falling. So that's why it's key. So today is all about stress marks. So Boma, praise, Belema, love, um, Chuku, Chu, Daka, Daka, Diri. So again, in this case, Diri, I think Diri is the same. Everything is the same. Diri book, Diri drug. The spelling is the same. The sound is the same. So where you have words that have the same spelling, same diacritic marks, it is the sentence that makes us understand which Diri in this case you are referring to. I went to buy my daughter's school book. So sometimes in this case is the definition of the diri that makes a difference. Sukulu diri, that is school, so you know his book. And then bubia diri, that is diri to drink, you know that is a drug. So that's how you, we make a difference in where the words and these diacritics are exactly the same. Okay, so AKR, so these are just a few examples. I, I will stop here, but I, the key point I want us to remember here is that from these are examples, A is looking at the stress marks and then saying it according to the stress marks, 
provided the stress marks are correct. And then if you know the word, like enemy, let's say you know the sound enemy. If I now say enemy to you and tell you to write it, you will listen to the A, you know it's rising. Nay, you know it's rising. Me is falling. So with that knowledge, you can now write enemy. Now, if I say something like enemy, if there was something like that, if I say enemy, you will now remember A is low, nay is low, me is rising. So again, from the sound of the word, you will be able to write, write it um, the way it should be. Okay, so welcome once more everybody and let's press on to today's lesson. Um, this is a long introduction, but I just thought it would be good to say this briefly. Um, there was a workshop on indigenous river state languages about 10 years ago. It was organized by the River State Government and the River State Readers Project in association with the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council. This was in the River State University of Technology. And it was agreed that efforts should be made to secure the approval of 14 more orthography of rivers languages. And our language was one of the, the 14 languages. Now, Dr. Isaac Gulube, Mr. Geoffrey Somiare, who sadly passed away recently, Mrs. Tobin, Esther Tobin, Mr. Elizabeth Agaga and Honorable Takena Jamba with blessed memory, they were assigned the responsibility of producing the draft copy of the Okrika orthography. So the Worker Language Committee and the River State Readers Project was given that responsibility. To the best of my knowledge, that work has never really been completed and published. And that's the work that more or less is looking at our language, looking at the stress marks or the diacritics and all of that. Some of the way they speak, some of the marks they used 50, 100 years ago are no longer in use. And their role was to now bring about a new system, drop some things that we no longer use, kind of modernize the language. Now, those details we won't go into. Those are kind of for the academic people what we are really keen on is just to be able to speak our language. So some of the marks that you may have seen, you may not see them in what we are teaching. What we are using is more or less the simplified version. Now, the key thing is here, tone marking, as I've just said, is an essential feature of our language because variation in the pitch of the voice can bring about a significant change in the meaning of words. And until this moment, there is no agreement on how to mark tone. So that's just a repetition of what I've said that the tone of your voice could make a huge difference between what you want to say and what you're conveying to people. So as we said last week, there are 37 letters in the Kereke alphabet and there are nine vowels that we use. So in terms of the stress marks, what we have here, ignore the dots in front of the um, letters. So we have um, A, A, E, O, U. Those are the five, the English A, E, I, O, U. They are the five vowels. But in addition, each of the vowels, apart from A, may have a dot underneath it or not. So if you look at A, A has no dot. Uh, we'll come back to these ones later. So A has no dot underneath it. E has a dot underneath or doesn't have a dot. And then I, or sorry, has a dot or doesn't have, O has a dot and also the U. So if we now go on to the R, you can see that this stress mark on the R is either falling or rising. There is no other stress mark for R. We don't have a dot under the R. We don't have a wavy sign over the R. It's just rising or falling. Then we come to A. Like we said, this is R. 
This is A, it's not E, it's A. Again, the A without a dot has a rising stress mark, as you can see here, you can see my arrow here, and then it has a falling stress mark. And then you have the air sound, like an egg. You have the air sound. So the air sound, again, has a dot, both of them, one falling, one rising. And then you have what is I in English is E in our language. So remember, E in English is A in our language, while I in English is E in our language. So it also has a falling and the rising mark. And then when it has a dot underneath, that is the A sound. That is the A sound. So the A is either rising or it's falling. Now, this is one um, mark which we will mention it um, in terms of using it. We're trying to give examples. I will say at this level, there are a few that we'll talk about, but I won't emphasize. I think that we'll leave it for a higher level. Now, there is when you have the dash or the hyphen on top of the vowels. So you can see this example here, there's a hyphen on top of the vowels. You can have the hyphen on top of all the vowels. When there's a hyphen on top of the vowels, what happens is that whatever you're saying, you stretch the sound. So like in, as a word called eerie, when somebody's gone missing. Normally if it is I-R-I, you just say eerie. But when you put the hyphen on top, you say eerie, you stretch. And that's what this mark, um, the hyphen on top, it just make it, makes you to stretch. So if I say ba is B-A, if I put a hyphen on top of the A is ba, so you stretch the hyphen. I mean, strike the sound. Okay, so we, I think the same thing goes with the other, um, the other vowels. So O, O, stress mark rising and falling. Then the U is U without a dot. And then it's O with a dot. So again, it's rising or falling. So one of the, one of the things I would like us to do maybe just as a practice thing later on is to try and put some cons some consonants before or after these vowels and then try and say the sound based on whether the, the stress marks are rising or falling. So that's what I would like us to do when we get to the breakout session. Just put, check some words which you can form and then put one or two consonants before or after the vowels and then be able to say the different sounds based on the stress marks and the dots. Then you've already given examples when we did the A, B, B, C. So the B without a dot is the labial sound B, B, while the B with a dot on, on that it is a palatal sound, which is B. So the sound is not coming from the lips, but it's coming from the, the palate, the inner part of the mouth. Likewise, the D sound, D, and then the other one with a dot underneath is the D, D, as if you're putting your tongue on your palate. So D versus D. So these are the all the stress marks that I would like us to bother with. Any other stress mark we can ignore for now. Is there any question or comment before we continue? Any question or comment? Um, just to just to comment that the. Um... Sometimes when we ha have the hyphen ma mark above um, the vowel, it also means that we are, um, that our tone is level. Mm. Sometimes it's not a stretching, but it is a leveled tone that mm. it represents. Okay. That's, um, that's one of the suggestions in the orthography. Mm photographies that have been published before. Step out, raise your hand. I Step. have a question, please. Sister Pat, do you raise your hand? No? Okay. No. 
All right, that's fine. So we would um, continue. Somebody um, has a question. I don't know who it is. Sorry? Somebody has a, a question, question, please. Right. Um, go on. Um, I was looking at the alphabets and I was wondering um, for the N, uh, there's NW and I think NY. Yes. But I didn't see ND. Like for, like when you say, um, <laughs> in, in day, something yeah. like that. Uh, no, ND, ND is ND, as in two letters. Oh, okay. There are two letters, but the NY and NW, they are one, as it were, it's one letter, I don't know how to put it, but there are two letters in one, while in day is N and D separately. Okay, the other, just to mention, now that you talked about it, the N, um, I'm not sure what you call this, this sign on top of the N, it has a name. Um, it's sometimes just a hyphen or it's the, the wavy line, I don't know. It's the wavy line, yeah, there's a name, there's a name for it. So that's the other thing that there's a nasal sound. You have the N on its own. And then when you have the N with a wavy sound, that's a nasal sound. So when you say nyengi, so it's a nasal sound. While you say ibikwe that's not that's a normal N sound. So the wavy okay. line is the nasal sound. So there are some words which are like that. So it's called the diacritic. It's T I L D E. I'm not sure how that is pronounced. It is tilde or tilde. That's the end with the wavy sound. It's called a diacritic tilt. Okay, so let's um, let's see where we are. So uh, again, looking at the letters they were gone through. So in this case, I've put the level the level sign above the R A E O U, and then on this side, you can see I put dots next to the letters for those who are unable to like those who have iphones if you don't have the right keyboard you won't be able to put an i a dot under the uh, letters as, as we have here with the b and the d as well as the a e o u that have the, the dots underneath so if you have a phone where you can't do that just put the dot beside the letter so that, that way you have the habit of writing it properly. It's a bit of a nuisance because your next letter will not be capitalized. So you have to remember to remove the capital letter. Mm -hmm. So that way, at least you know that you're writing it properly. But when you have the proper keyboard that can give you the diacritics where you want them, then that will be perfect. So uh, we've already gone through this example with the Agba and um, Agba just to remind us that if it's a rising stress mark, your tone must rise, otherwise you will have a different um, representation. Um, so these are a few examples of, um, a few examples of using the diacritics properly. Let's look at this one. This is the air sound. Air, and you can see the dot underneath makes it the air sound. So dance here is called pende. It's called pende because the, the stress mark is rising. So your tone is rising and the gain is rising. So you have here pende as an example. And just another example where it says he he. Now, if you look at this, is um, this is an interesting example of um, what is called homonyms. I'll come back to this in a moment, but let's look at this example: ground, kiri. So it's a it's a level level second e sound while the first e is rising. So kiri. Now this is an old, this is what I was saying, that this is the old circumflex above the O. We won't use this really, but those who 
spoke the language or wrote it 30, 50 years ago would have the circumflex over the O. So this is Kwako for gorilla. Kwako. Lolia. Sorry, you were saying something like, is it Kwako or? No, Kwako. Kwako. <laughs> right. So Lolia for star. Lulia for star. Um, ma, this. And then Nini knows. So just a few examples. And so they like in the case of Lulia here, is the O sound without a dot. Now, lonely. A lolly in this, if you are saying a lolly, for example, you have the dot underneath the O, so lolia. So you can see lolly, they're all falling. Lia, and then it goes up. The A is the rising stress mark. So these are homonyms, uh, you have the synonyms where two words have may have the same meaning. You have homonyms where they have different meanings. The same word will have different meanings because of the stress marks around the words. And then you have the antonyms where words have opposite meanings. So let's just look at this. It's an interesting um, array of words. There are five words here have the same Five, three letters, but have different meanings. So this first one, I, R, I, A, the A sound is actually a falling sound. This sign is wrong. This also a falling yeah. sign. So this is a re, I, or me, a re, Ere. Can we all say ere? Ere. Again. Ere. Ere. One more time. Ere. 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 Okay. Then the next one is the same IRI, but in this case, the stress marks are both rising. So it is ere. Can we say that, please? Ere. 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 Eritubo. Eritubo. Again, Which is who are you? And I could say, Ere, it's me. It's like I'm my voice. Okay. If you recognize me because of who I am. So it's Eritubo. Ere. Eritubo, who are you? Ere, it's me. I'm the one. So the next term. Um, the next word is blade, and it is both rising, but there are no dots. And remember, the I without a dot is the E sound. So it is iri mm. is the E sound. And then, like I said earlier, when somebody misses the way or the, they've gone and miss, you say it's iri. So it's the rising sound and then the level sound, eerie. And then the final one is thread. The initial E is falling, the second E is rising. So in case of thread, you say eerie, eerie. So that's just an example of what difference stress max makes. So can we just go through this again and just say together, Ere, 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 Again, Ere, Ere, Okay, we're going to do one at a time. So let's hear the <laughs> marble say Ere, Ere, Ebaka, Ere, Again. Which of them are we saying now? The first? 
No, just my just listen to me and then use my tone. Okay. Eri. 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 So who am I? Which one am I referring to when I say Eri? You. Okay, great. Well, you mm -hmm. as in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, I'm going to say Eri. 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 Again, Eri. Eerie. Can we say eerie? Eerie. 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 Okay, that's fine. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this slide away and then I'm going to ask, I'm going to now ask somebody when, what is eerie? Somebody so tell me what is eerie. Eerie, guys, I want to meet his way. Okay, how do you spell that? <laughs> I R I. Okay. I. I, I, I. Is that Lydia talking? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, I R I. Tell me, describe the I R I for me. Okay, I with the rising um, what do they call it? I. <laughs> I with the rising, uh, is it uh, that the rising? Yes, <laughs> signs. Then R I again with the same rising sign. Eerie, the level, the level, okay. the suspect okay, is nine. Yes, yes, level I. Okay, but at least you you understand where where uh, we are coming from. So I'll give I'll put a few examples here. We can do that during the breakout session. These okay. are homonyms. Um, you may not know the words, but hopefully the teacher will take you through the words. Um, let me take a photograph of the words. So, so you have a market square is chiri, and then leopard or tiger is cherry, and then land is kiri, cut is Kerry. Uh -huh. Dog is Obiri. Uh -huh. Smart is Obiri. Obiri. Com is Bo. Uh -huh. Plenty uh -huh. is Bo. Uh -huh. And then we talk about you, Ere, and uh -huh. I, Ere. So there's a few examples. So just go on to again. Um, so I want you guys to just do one at a time. Remember, can you do law? It's interesting. You're a lawyer, so you do law. Okay. Um. Oloko. 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 Yes, all rising. Oloko. So everything is up there. And the okay. pass next one going down. Olo. Um. Olo. What's permit? Olo. 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 <laughs> it's all falling. Olo. Dinamo was in law. Ogo. Fantastic. Lydia was cough. Olo. Olo. Yes. Okay. Um. <laughs> Tamnomia was parrot. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Come on, me, are you there? <laughs> Unmute yourself, what parrot? Um, while we wait, me abaka, what's parrot? Oh, Colombi. <laughs> it has um dots. All of all the vowels have dots underneath them. So, yeah, oh, Colombi. Yes, so color B, there's a missing stress mark over the third O. So it's or color B. So it's all level, um, falling stress marks or color B. Um, victory was hold. Sorry, there are dots underneath the O's. Okay. All law. All law. All law. All law. Yeah, sorry, the, the dots are missing. So it's all law. Okay, Sola, you're next. 
Um, let's do the NW. Forget the NW. Do the um, let's move on. A few missing stress marks here. Okay, Rick, um, who was asking, Swala, what's mullet fish? Bulu. 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 Bulu is, the second stress mark is falling in Bulu. But because they are both rising, it's Bulu. Okay, can you take it again? Bulu. 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 Bulu, that's it. Um, Tamnomi, are you ready for us? What's deep? Tamnomi, are you there? Yes. Yes, what's deep? Boo. Boom. Boom, fantastic. Um, has anybody not spoken yet today? Have we all spoken? Um, okay, Victory, one more time. What's bad uh, smell? Pardon? What's bad smell? Furo. The last you. Foro, foro. 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 Yeah. Foro. Okay. And these are a few of the examples done by, by you. So let's go on to have a quick um, breakout session. I will just do a few words. Remember what we said earlier that we can put. Um, we can just put one or two consonants before and after the vowels and then try and come up with two or three letter words and then just say it differently based on whether the stress marks are going up or down. And then the share will help you think about a few words and then the other, um, the other homonyms that we mentioned, chiri, chiri and any other one that the teachers can think about. So before we go, just a reminder that we have the stress marks either falling, rising, or level. It's important to put your tone right to convey what you want to convey. So there are two options. One is if you know the word and how it sounds, then use that knowledge to make sure that your stress marks are correct when you're writing it. Then if you don't know the word, check it, use a dictionary, check your previous lessons, you'll probably find the word somewhere and make sure that you get it right. It's better to learn a few words and know them very well, rather than know so many words, but not know where to put the stress marks. So that way, when you know a word, you know it very well. And if a word has several meanings, you already have an idea on how to put the marks correctly to differentiate one meaning from the other. So I think there are just two teachers here today. So um, what's going to happen is we'll, we'll break into two, um, two groups, and then we'll come back in 10 minutes to round up. Is that OK? Yeah. So two groups. Um, and TIB will lead one. I'll lead the other one. OK. We'll come back in ten in ten minutes, yes. Okay, can I'm the only one here. Can I see your faces? Unless you have a, a special reason to keep your faces off. Either you don't want the world to see your face. OK. Um, so what I would like us to do is to, to look at a few, a few words. Um, can we start with the A that is, hi Lydia, can we start with A, um, 
do you know any words that you can form with A, rising or falling? Any words you can form with A? Um, Agba. Agba. Sorry? Agba. Okay, yes, Agba. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that earlier on. So Agba is an example. So Agba, as we know, is Agba. Uh, the A is falling. G, B, and the A is falling again. Agba. Are we, are we okay with that? Lydia? Yes. yes. Okay, Agba is falling. So like we said, Agba, the A is what? Rising. Rising. Yeah, so just remember, the voice sound tells us whether the A, the stress mark is going up or is coming down. Agba, your voice is down. Agba, your voice is up. So it's almost as if you raise your voice, the tone is up. If your voice is down, the tone is down. So Agba is lower, is stress mark. Agba is going up. Okay, let's go on to take B, for example. Which two letter word can you form with B? Can I ask the person in the lemon green shirt at the back? What is a two letter word with starting with B? Two letter word starting with B. Both. Both. Now, fantastic, go and sit down, well done. So she's, what's your name? Asime, fantastic. Okay, so Asime has used um, B-O as her two letter word. Now B-O can be Bo. Bo means it's quite a bit. So B-O and it's B without a dot underneath. So it's the so-called labial sound, so it's Bo like we said, B can either have a dot underneath it or no dot. When B has a dot underneath it is a B. Well, if there is no dot, is the B, is a labial sound, B. If it is a dot underneath, it's the palatal sound, which is B. So one is B and the other one is B. So one is coming from your lips is labial. The other one, your tongue is on your palate. So that's palatal sound. So bo is B with a dot underneath it. And then the O, because it's the O sound, there is no dot underneath the O. So bo is B with a, a dot on, uh, without a dot, O without a dot, and the stress mark is rising. Bo, but if I say bo, bo is come. Bo, the B has a dot underneath it. The O, Bo, Bo, O is still the O sound. So the B has a dot underneath, the O doesn't have a dot underneath, and the stress mark is falling. Sorry, I can't write it because we're in a breakout session, but if you look at the dictionary, you will see it. So Bo is a bit. Somebody that I say, if you say Bo care, means it's not much. Bo is, means it's plenty. Then Bo is come. So those are just two examples of how the stress marks can differ. So let's use another word, somebody else with two letter words. Anybody else? Anybody else, two letter words? Bah. Come on, yes, come on, tell us. Bah. Good man, yes, give us an example. <laughs> right. He said bah, bah. Bah, fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. So ba is B-A. Now ba, you can say that is a palatal sound. So ba has a dot underneath the B. Ba. Now, I'm not sure ba is a word in Okrika, but if ba is a word, there'll be no dot underneath the B. But ba, ba. has a ba. dot underneath it. Now ba, you can see that my voice is rising. Ba, so the A has a rising stress mark. Any ba, 
And that's another thing about a language. If you say ba on its own, the stress mark is rising. Now, if I say ba, ba wa area, which is good night, the A is not rising. So some those are a bit technical things that the same word on its own can have a rising sound. But when you apply it in a sentence, the stress marks may change, but we'll learn that as we go on. But ba is morning has a rising stress mark. But ba also is another word. If you're holding a breakable plate and it falls out of your hand and you break the plate, yes. you, you will hear efere ebasan. You've broken the plate. That is not a rising sound. The a is a falling sound. So while ba, ba is rising, in this other one, ba, it's falling. So you have the same ba. One means break, the other one means morning. All right, any other examples? <laughs> any other examples, two letter words? Bay. Bay, yes, bay is another word. It's a bit of a, an informal way. I uh, hear people say, yeah, bay, you this man, mm. you young boy, you say bay, bay to boy, who is this, who are you, that kind of thing. So bay, again, is the palatal B. It has a dot underneath the B and then bay, because it's the A sound, it's E without a dot underneath. And you say, B, your voice is rising. So it is B with a dot underneath, the E without a dot underneath, and then the, um, um, the stress mark is rising. So that's B. So we've talked about Bo, talked about Bo, talked about Ba, talked about Ba, talked about B. Any other two letter words? Well done, yes. Boo. Yes, lady boo. in black. As in Minge boo. Boo. Yes, use. Moo. You say moo. Boo. 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 Fantastic. <laughs> Go and drink water. So mu is M-U-N. Now mu is the U sound. And uh, it's M-U-N. Now it's mu. The N is a nasal sound. Because it's a nasal sound, it has a wavy mark on top of it. So mu, M-U-N. Uh, moon, the U is falling, moon, the N has a wavy mark on top. So yes, moon is a good word. And what we talked about that, I talked about boo. Boo is to drink. Boo is the palatal sound. So there's a dot underneath the B. Boo, boo, the U is rising. So it's the U sound. So there's no dot underneath the U. But now we also have boo. Boo is the mangrove swamp back home. That's the same B-U, but in this case, the U is falling. So while boo has a rising stress mark, which means to drink, boo is a swamp area, has a falling stress mark. So that's just a difference that B-U can mean to drink, or we're talking about the natural vegetation, the stress mark, makes all the difference. So imagine if you told somebody, Moo Mengi Boo, if they wonder, how can you drink swamp? <laughs> so that's why it's important for you to say, Moo Mengi Boo is a fallen one. I say again, Moo Mengi Boo, that means something entirely different. Right, so we're going to go back to the groups now. Any final word? Any final word? Victor, you are going to say something earlier. Uh, I've said two now. <laughs> oh, you have, okay. You've, been, you've not said anything. Okay. <laughs> I said B. B, okay, fantastic. Okay, that's fine. Let's I have go. one, okay. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll go back to the group now. This is okay. the, it's almost five o'clock my time, which is six o'clock in Nigeria. And we have the advanced class takes place from five minutes time for an hour. If anybody wants to be there quietly, you can join, but then that would, we'll go on to the advanced class, but we'll just go back to the main group. 
and then we will um, finish up. Thank you all so much for your participation. Thank you. Okay, Thank let's you. Back to the main group and round up. So welcome back everyone. So we'll just um, do a roundup here. Let me see if I can share this screen. Can you all see this screen? Can you unmute yourself? Can you see this screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so just to say that, um, so Market Square, it's Chiri. Mm -hmm. So you can see CH, the CH, and then um, in this case, there is no dot underneath the eye. So it's Chiri, which is Market Square. But then Leopard is Chiri. So you can see that there's a dot under both eyes. And that's Chiri. So in this case, in case of Chiri, the stress marks are both falling Chiri, while with Market, with Leopard, the first eye is rising while the second eye is falling. So that's just an example of um, two words that have that are homonyms, have the same spelling, but have different meanings. And in our group, we mentioned a few words, talk about boo, which is that, boo, which is to drink. And then we we'll talk about boo, which is a swamp. So, um, so this is just an example of again two words that have the same meaning, but have different um, sorry different same spelling, but different meanings because of the um, because of the stress marks. So. I think we'll come to the end of our session. I'll ask Kanti Bibia to say a final word before we finish. How was your group? Our group was fine. We were slow. We didn't finish. <laughs> we, we had to go back to our um, alphabet a bit. We, we started by identifying which vowels we were dealing with. OK. We found that we needed to know the difference first of all, identify the type, the vowel that we were dealing with, and then we, we turn to the diacritics. Okay. Um, so, so I think that is probably a way for most of us who are new to the language mm. to learn. Um, if we have the advantage of knowing the word itself, like we've heard it before, mm -hmm. or we have got the, um, or we've got the uh, the English translation of it, then that helps us put it in context. So we can then sort of say, okay, that's the one that sounds like an E, okay. not like A, and so on and so forth. And then we can move on to the diacritics. Okay, so thank you very much. So what we'll do, I guess, back in the WhatsApp groups, we'll try and again, um, look at what you've done so far if you put any if you if you've typed and shared anything in the group try and go back and look at what you've shared and check the diacritics and if you haven't put any or you have learned a bit and you can correct it that would be fine otherwise think about a few new words you know based on the um the vowels that we have and just put a few new words and if you can begin to think about simple sentences whatever simple three letter, three word sentences. I am home, I am coming, I'm going. No, such simple sentences. Write it in English, write it in Krikanokwai, and then try and put the diacritics. So that would be an excellent way to go for this week. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of the evening and then have a good week ahead. Bye, Waire. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to start the next <laughs> week. Now, so. yeah. Yeah, right. I don't know. I don't know.